What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate business into a life of freedom. We have a couple of killer people with us. It's in yet another edition of the East Coast, West Coast Showdown, uh, but we have a different guest with us today. And so we have Ray Wood here. He's out of Ontario. And uh, we're going to bring him in in just a second. We're going to talk about how to win that listing. We also have, as our regular Friday drop-in, we have the evil bald ninja himself, the Vulpinator, Gene Volpe himself, representing the uh, the Flyers in this horrible mismatch. Uh, so we're going to have a little showdown on how to win that listing and our best strategies and tips for taking more seller clients. First of all, Greg McDaniel, the junior grandmaster, is in the co-pilot seat where you so belong. Greg, what's up today? I am. I am. I'm no longer walking around an airport loss like a lost kitten. Um, running away from children as quickly as I can as they scream in the background and hunt me down like a wild beast. Uh, but I, uh, dude, Matt, I, guess what happened to me? I lost weight today. Ask me how. Well, I'm hoping it's not like colonoscopy related or something like that. <laughs> well, what are you talking about here? What do you mean you lost weight today? <laughs> Immediately go to the ass. Immediately go to the ass. Um, <laughs> But uh, Gene's like, hmm, you wow. got a good point there. So did everybody. Um, I went, don't do it, Greg. I was going, I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have been carrying uh, three vehicles uh, for the, for a long, long time. My Denali, my S5, my S50, my S55 uh, Mercedes, and then my uh, my SRT. I finally sold my Denali today to my wonderful friend Candace, who she desperately needs it, and it's a wonderful thing. It's great to see the smile on her face as we sign the paperwork at the DMV. So. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome day, and I'm blessed to be here. Ray is a ninja, but we have the white ninja versus the evil ninja. So this is going to be a lot of good information flying at you guys. So I'm glad you're here today. Spread this out. Share this right now. If this is something you think people are going to need to know how to win that listing, hit that. take your meat nugget if you're watching this live and beep, beep, hit the share button. Thank you. That felt so good. Take your meat nugget. <laughs> oh, that sounds, that's probably the worst thing you've ever said, the worst phrase you've ever coined. No. All right. So for Ray, he uh, he mentioned that you're a ninja, Ray. I would love for you to uh, before we get into who you are, I want to know where you are. Please tell the audience what we're looking at. We're looking at Four Mile. Hi everybody, and welcome, and and thank you guys, uh, Gene, Matt, and Greg. Lovely to be on your awesome show. I'm a big fan, and uh, pinching myself that I'm actually here. I'm coming <laughs> to you live from from Four Mile Lake on the beautiful Kawarthas. Uh, Kawarthas is, is an area just north of Toronto. It's a sunny day. Uh, the, lake, the lake that you see behind me uh, a month ago was still frozen solid, and there's about four feet of snow here on the deck. But uh, after a long, brutal winter, the sun is out, uh, the snow's melted away, and we're going to put the docks in. As you can see, the docks are still down there on the, on the, on the grass, waiting to be liberated. And that's just a little <laughs> bit of a look of four mile lake or as we like to call it here in canada 6.2 kilometer lake yes wow. well and we can all hear your famous canadian accent we're all very very familiar with it so we appreciate you uh, joining us please please explain <laughs> please explain are you are you're an, you're an australian who now lives in canada what's what's the background um pretty straightforward to be totally honest i uh i went on a kentucky tour in europe in 1985 have you, have you guys ever done that no, a lot of Kiwis, a lot of Australians, and some oh. Canadians. And I met a Canadian lady, and we got married. We lived in Melbourne for 20 years, and then after a while, she decided I want to come back to Canada, and uh, we'd separated at that point. And uh, I said, well, you're taking the kids. How long are you going for? And she said, well, it'll only be a year. And four years later, she was still over here, so um, decision made. I wanted to be with my kids, so I packed up. That was about, that'll be 10 years ago this December. And uh, I met my beautiful Christine, the pixie, and uh, she's just awesome. And uh, we have a wonderful life together and everybody's happy. So uh, so life is good. I'm, I can connect with my kids and I'm here in beautiful Canada. I mean, this is not Sydney Harbour. Uh, it's not even the Sunshine Coast. It's not even California, but it's a whole lot cheaper. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I, I'm a water dog, self-proclaimed water dog, and having a house. I made that decision to the, actually yesterday that I am going to own it. My next house is going to be on water. End of story. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. care. You know, I, I seriously think, and people think I'm a bit loopy when I say this, but the vibe that I get when I'm here, and a lot of people say it's the, it's the magic of the water or whatever, it's, um, it's a beautiful lake in so far as it's, it's half granite and half limestone. So... 
uh, the quick science lesson there is they cancel each other out and the, P and the pH, like the pH in your pool, is always perfect. It's clear, it's full of fish, uh, and sometimes we're known to get out on the water and uh, have, have a few bevies. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. that. That sounds very yeah. dangerous. All right, so Ray, so sure. Before we jump into uh, a couple of questions I've got, uh, just briefly share with people what your real estate background is. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a fourth generation real estate agent from, uh, from Melbourne, Victoria. Um, and I've been in real estate all my life. I've never had any other job. Uh, and uh, when I came over here, I had to learn uh, to um, uh, my real estate selling days were behind me, but I'm a passionate, a passionate marketer. Um, I've written I've written uh, a book called How to Sell Your Home for More. That's done about three hundred thousand copies. So um, I started yes. leveraging my marketing ideas to uh, to help real estate agents. That's where Best Agents started. Uh, about ten years ago, we started a software company with some partners called Locked On, and Locked On is a real estate CRM uh, where people can manage all of their contacts, great mobile mobile app, etc. Um, and a few years ago, I started a company called Jiggler, J-I-G-G-L-A-R. So those of you familiar with Canva uh, will know it is an online marketing platform where you can get in and, and edit stuff. So Jiggler is the real estate version of Canva, and um, it's going along really well. We've got a we've, we've got a whole got a got a big following at the moment, and after we've only been in the market about three months, but it's going very very well. So, so that's my story. Very wow. cool. The three hundred thousand units on that book—that's something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, pretty that's awesome. Insane. I mean, I mean, Matt, you're writing a book right now. One of probably many that you're going to write, and I'm sure that you aspire to do three hundred thousand, you know, copies, you know, the first mm -hmm. week. Yeah, um, well, just just to give you an idea, three hundred thousand. So I talked to Mark Devine, who published the the Way of the Seal, and I think that was his fourth or fifth book. That was on three hundred thousand copies when we spoke. I mean, a business yeah. a business book is good if it cracks. 25,000, really good if it cracks 50,000, but yep. 300,000, even yep. if it's over the course of a lifetime, is no joke. Yep. I mean, that is yep. that is phenomenal. Yeah. Well, it's about 16 editions so far. So, um, wow. so yeah, it's been it's been awesome. And and I actually I actually uh, give it to agents as a lead generator as well. So that's mm. an interesting thing talking about marketing just quickly because when I first started in real estate, I, I was from the country originally, and then I came to the big city. So getting started was really hard, and uh, it was also 1990. So I don't know if you guys remember 1990, but it was a very, very tough time to be in business. Massive recession, uh, and um, I need. Uh, we know when the market turns off that the volume of property actually slips, right? So, um, uh, you know, values slip, but you know, you might have 50 sales in an area, and suddenly there's 20. So the volume of, of, of property slips. So I had to come up with a way to uh, engage my market better, and um, that's where the book came from. My point. My point of difference in the market is to be able to say, and here's my pitch, the thing I love about real estate is that it has no recommended retail price. I, I use a system that helps my sellers get a better result. Can I show you how it works? And the book kind of explains that in simple format, nice big type, so all the baby boomers can read it. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a good formula. So I, I do it in an electronic version as well. So. Well, yeah, and this brings uh, me to my, my first question because the one of the questions that, that I am, I'm always fascinated with and, and that jumped out to me today, this is from uh, Steve Rouse in uh, in the Lead Gen Description Objections Facebook group. Says, do you send a pre-listing packet prior to your listing appointment? Uh, do you use a company to create it and what's in it? I would imagine, Ray, this is the ultimate. I don't know if you use it this way, but this a book would be the ultimate pre-listing packet, right? It is. It is very much so, Matt. Um, I'm huge on a pre-listing kit, uh, and I've got a whole formula to it that that uh, I can get into if you want. But boy, to be pre-sold before you arrive. Um, uh, they say a lot of people have already decided which agent they're going to use. Say if they're interviewing three or four agents, which a lot of people do, uh, and a lot of you know they mightn't have a relationship with any of them. I think anything you can do to get in and win that listing is worth it. And and I think Greg, you and I got into this recently when we were talking. But I believe if you lose a listing, let's say your average fee is call it ten thousand dollars, just to be simple, right? So let's say you let's say the fee that you're going to make your gross fee is ten thousand dollars. I believe if you lose a listing, it costs you forty forty thousand, costs you four times as much. Here's why: you've just lost ten grand, you've just given ten thousand dollars to your competitor. You're just financing their career. That's twenty grand. <laughs> um, you are losing one or two opportunities to list around that listing in the coming eighteen months because we all know how momentum creates momentum, right? We all know how. Right. 
just listed and just sold marketing is so important. It's probably some of the best marketing you can do is, is work hard around your, you know, hustle around your listings. Because it's amazing when one property comes up in an area, it just seems to be like the, the pixie dust happens. Other properties mm. seem to come up as well. So you're losing a huge opportunity. So if we said, if we all agreed that losing a listing is going to cost you 40 grand, it's worth going to a little bit of trouble, I think to help your chances when you when you when you arrive in the living room and when you actually get to present that's my so, view. so let's say that um, that we do li miss the listing right yep. gene i want i want to hear your thoughts let's play devil's advocate on this real quickly okay so you're not ray wood you don't have a book you just got your ass handed to you how could you counteract that digitally in the marketing realm to till, still capitalize on that market area Eyeballs. We we talk about that every week, just about right. It's about creating that that wheel that you, that you can walk back into that home and say, "I'm going to get thirty five thousand eyeballs on your property in the first thirty days." Is that does that interest you? So you got to you got to continue to build your base and your foundation on your social and everywhere else. Be able to track it with analytics. Mm -hmm. Once you can do that, and you got to build it one, and, and make it snowball. So I mean, that's the easiest way, and that's great. We, it's something we talk about every week, I think. Yeah, it was good to have reinforcements, but what I was going for on this was the question of the, you didn't get the listing. Like, you, you got aced out by Matt Johnson or Bob, oh, Bob from Remax beat you. How could you How could you take – is there a way – I know I'm throwing you under the bus here publicly, but, well, you're the Vulpinator. You can handle it. <laughs> um, and, you know, what, how, could you, how could you leverage the, the, the neighborhood without having the listing so that people can – see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I, I would take some thought, but I certainly would at least probably target that. Well, I mean, for, first, we could carpet bomb that neighborhood with some direct mail and then tie that direct mail back to what I was just telling you about. Um, right. You know, so send it to a landing page where I have my data, my info, my tools, um, and then actually sell that house, bring the buyer to that house. That's a way to, to get in there, too. Bring the buyer to the one you lost. Yeah, that's that's interesting because that yeah, if you don't get the listing, you can still kind of take advantage of the pixie dust effect and try to scoop up the other listings or at least get a shot at the other listings sure. by direct mail and by putting you know uh, yeah by targeted like Facebook ads to that area is what you're saying. Definitely, well, yep. You, you yeah. can also go the the route of this of saying to the fact like, hey, you have intimate knowledge of a property that's coming on the market. If anybody's looking for a three bed, two bath, two th two two thousand square feet on a quarter acre in this part of town, get a hold of me. It's not on the market. I can get you in, or I can give you I can give you the details. You can yep. probably use it as a leverage tool to get buyers right there. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. I've got a flyer. Can got I flyer? can I share my screen or are you guys? Uh, is that is it that works, a, I can't share my screen? Well. Can I? Yeah, yeah uh, center at the bottom, that big blue button yeah. for share screen. You got it? Okay. Yeah, cool. All you podcast listeners, we will fill you in. Matt will do a step by step uh, play like a baseball right. game. That's right. Can you see it? Can you see it yet? Mm hmm Okay, this is a, this is what we call a street sign flyer or uh, it's called a price drive letter. It's kind of originated as a letter. But this is uh, I'm inside I'm inside a jiggler now, so what you can do here is is uh, is edit your flyer and the formula with this is that to, to answer your question Greg that, that you were just talking to Gene about just now if a property if you're trying to get going you're trying to get some traction in your area um, and uh, you don't have any listings if one of your competitors gets a listing you wait about six to ten days and in around that neighborhood you drop this bad boy mm -hmm. because what what this does is that um, is it is it capitalizes on the pixie dust effect because um, uh, other people in the area will will think okay well there's a property on the market we're thinking of selling why don't I go now because we're going to capitalize on all the buyers that that property gets and uh, and you know we might get extra buyers we'll get extra traffic right so now whether that's true or whether it's not the reality is that's the way people think so we get this out and you you do about two like I said. You wait about six to ten days until after the property's listed, then you get this out. So, uh, and it just says the property market in the area has changed dramatically. In fact, we're finding property owners are surprised to discover the current value of their property. To assist local owners, we're offering a free opinion of value for every home in your area. Each evaluation will take approximately 15 minutes. We hope to complete a street today. What's in it for you, etc. So you can tailor this as to as to however you want it. So that's the 
that's I guess the simple advantage in in having something like that. And it's like I said, it's in I'm, I'm inside a jiggler now. You can jump in and create this in a free account. So uh, any anybody can do it. Um, so that's 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 something that I definitely look for. I was, I was speaking with a guy from Queensland. He were, it's a wonderful story. Um, he's 19 years old. Uh, he's a dad. Um, yeah. Just got a dead end job as a diesel mechanic on his second day or first day at work. He backs a forklift over a over a thousand dollar drum of oil and they give him the sack. Right. So he goes home, feels sorry for himself for 24 hours, goes out, gets a job in real estate. And I'm only talking like a year or so ago. Basically used this flyer in his area and he generated 250,000 K in common his first year and won rookie of the year for his company. So. So that is a good story. I, I love stories like that. That's yeah. fantastic. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. good for him. Way to crush it out there. I mean, he absolutely he lost a thousand dollars, lost a shit job, and then he got a career that's going to take him to higher than he ever could ever have imagined. And yep. his kid is going to get the financial resources that he's he's going to need as a as a as a grown up or you know, as a teenager. Um, yep. Yep. Let me let me stop you... share on my screen anyway. We'll get back to. So Ray, what when it comes Sorry. to your you know experience doing real estate. As a for a newer agent, you know, what is something that people can do if they don't know everything um, to compete against the, the agents that are seasoned? How can they not lose the listing um, versus losing the listing and having to lose that 40 grand? How can they make that 40 grand as a newer agent? Because the veteran agents, we they know what they're doing. The newer agents are the ones that truly need the help. Um, yeah, I, I do like prospecting. My neighbours decided to fire up the chainsaw. Can you believe it? It's can you hear that? <laughs> can so you, you and Greg have the same neighbours. <sighs> I can't believe that. Yeah, but Throw we can't hear him. Can at him. Yeah, but we can't. Hey. We can't hear him. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> he stopped. He stopped. Um, Bastard. I would. I would prospect fiercely around um, around existing listings, because. Uh, um, if you're trying to if you're trying to crack an area, um, I'd door knock. I'd say, hey, courtesy call, just wanted to let you know, and always arrive with news. Um, if you can't prospect, if you can't call people, courtesy call, just wanted to let you know, 21 McDaniel Streets just hit the market. Uh, looks like going for 750 or or whatever it is. Just wanted to let you know. Now, you're not saying that you're the agent, but you're not saying that you are either. So um, mm -hmm. I think it's a cool way to connect. Um, I think every new agent should be uh, my my view on this. I'd be interested on in what you guys think, but I think every new agent should be an absolute magnet for attracting new contacts and sticking them in their CRM and building that relationship and retaining them. Um, there's a trainer. I think his name's Buffini, Brian Buffini, mm -hmm. and for years and years he's been saying, "Don't waste your time with everybody. Only focus on the people that want to sell now." And I can't work out the logic in that because the gestation time, in my experience, nobody's ever nobody's ever said I'm wrong on this. The gestation time between when somebody thinks about selling and when they actually hit the market is, give or take, the average time, 12 months. So mm. if somebody's coming on the market in 12 months, why would we want to not give them any attention? Why wouldn't we want to nurture that contact and give them reasons why they want to be doing business with us, develop the relationship? People do business with people they know, like and trust. You know, we all know that. So yeah, I'm I'm big on the relationship. Um, some of the best agents that I know that I've had on the podcast um, are people who their only KPI, the only measurable they're interested in is one thing: is new contacts per month. They're not interested in listings or sales. Not interested in that target. They want new contacts into their business. So, a good real estate agency, a good business, whether you're somebody on your first day or you're a massive uh, Keller Williams office or whatever you might be. Um, then the, the thing to do there is to be able to focus on the funnel and what happens then. We're probably getting a bit ahead of ourselves, but uh, this sounds like an area Gene knows a little bit about as well. Gene. <laughs> Gene. Gene has muted himself. Please unmute yourself. Yes. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just listening. I like his accent. I'm, I'm also <laughs> trying to find uh, my tip of the day is Expedia because I'm getting ready to finish my airfare to where he's at. <laughs> Jeez, he's got beer over there already. It's like I've got beer. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. We've got we got Toronto Maple Leafs on the TV. No, we haven't. They can't <laughs> play in the finals anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So, um, so when you when you're thinking about getting the listing, um, you, you've got to be a little bit careful. You know, they call it commission breath. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be you, you don't want to be over the top, but the uh, you know and desperate. And people are always thinking about that. You know, where's their next commission check coming from? But if you've got numbers and you're managing them in your CRM and you're looking after them, um, and I'd be I'd be implementing like 20 points of contact for 12 months. Uh, it's that's that's how often you need to you need to do it. They say so that under 10 nobody's heard of you. Uh, 12 to 14 times you got some recognition. 20 times you're a household name. So how are you going to communicate? You got hard mail. You got text, SMS. Um, you can send them a little video in Bonjoro or one of those cool apps. Uh, you can email them, of course. But most importantly, don't forget to jump on the phone and call them. Again, the best agents I know are, are spending like two, three hours every day solid prospecting. And these are, these are guys, you know, earning two, three, four, five mil in, uh, in GCI every year. So they're on the phone. Yes, they have other people doing it well, but but who's going to... Who's going to do? Who's going to be better at making that call? The actual agent who's getting the business, or somebody you're hiring for twenty-five bucks an hour, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I can't think of what is more important than uh, than doing that. The other thing I'd be doing is if I was, even if I wasn't, if, even if I was just starting, or even if I wanted to stimulate the growth in my business, one thing that I'd do is that I'd create a list and call it, say you call it Matt's list if you have one, Matt, and it would be. Everybody in your area, every professional, every business in your area, everybody from the coffee shop to uh, the electrician, to the contractor, to the drywaller, to the car dealer, to the dry cleaner. And because you can quickly go through Google, you could make one of those in a day, right? And you put that together and you get, I don't know, 40 names on it. Then you print 40 off and you actually send it out to everybody on the list. Hi, Greg, just wanted to let you know that you're the preferred realtor on my list. Uh, be sure and, uh, you know, um, if anybody comes your way, let them know uh, I sent you and give them the red carpet treatment, warm regards, Ray, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So you're creating these relationships. Like every business wants new business. So it's just another way that you can connect. And you know that if I'm talking to a, an electrician and say, hey, buddy, I might need your help from time to time, um, he's going to look after me. It's the law of reciprocity, right? I think yeah. that's the way it works. Yeah, I, I love that idea of going out there. And we we talked about it in the past a little bit about you know getting you know building up the the the, the relationships, but the, the there was a question asked in um in, in the uh, the side over here. I think Veronica asked that. Do you ever go back and ask when you lose a listing so you can get better? Like ask them, hey, so why are we not working together? And I, I do it all the time, and I get some of the craziest answers of why we lose listings, and it's stupid shit. Like I lost a listing last year, no, two years, two years ago now. Um, they loved me. They loved everything we were going to do, but they thought because I didn't make it clear, they thought that I was going to pass them off to another agent on my team, and I wouldn't work with them anymore. And like yeah. that's why you didn't work, well, list with me. And then you should see them. They deflated like a balloon. And so I think it's very positive also as a newer agent because the suggestions you're giving are gold. And you know, people yeah. should go back and re-listen to this again. Um, but you know what you're saying. What, if you don't get it, and you are going, you are not going to get every listing. I don't care no. if your mom told you know your mom said that you're going to win every listing. You're not. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. Don't be arrogant about you know the loss. Don't don't try to hide that. Be like, guys, I am so sorry. We're not going to work together. Please help me understand what I did or what I did not do. That you know was the reason why we're not going to work together. I, I'm yeah. a, I'm a master of my craft. I want to become better yeah. at it, and, I'll, and I need to learn from you. And people yeah, for will sure. Open up. They yeah. will tell you everything that you need. What to can know. I learn from this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm. I don't think enough people, guys. I don't think enough agents ask for the order at the listing, and they're probably not confident in doing that. Is my thinking because they they haven't prepared well enough, and preparing well enough means sending in a pre-listing kit. Preparing well enough means when you knock on the door and the owner says, "Hey, would you like to take a look around?" I always say, you know what, I'd love to have a look around, but can we have a quick chat first, right? Why am I doing that? Because after I've looked around, I'll say, what do you think our house is worth and what's your commission? And don't let the door smack you in the ass on the way out. <laughs> that's, pretty much, that's pretty much what happens. So if I can delay that process, I'm building some rapport. So I'm sitting down at the table 
I'm asking a few questions. And here's my favorite question at a listing presentation. So this is a $40,000 gig, right? Remember, I said you're gonna, it's costing you four times. It's a $40,000 gig. So what's my question at the listing, at the listing presentation? Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel, um, I just wanna say thanks for the opportunity. After you got the small talk out of the way, et cetera. Thanks for the opportunity of meeting with you today. I'm looking forward to showing you a little bit more about how we work. Let me ask you, I know your time's important. What would you like to achieve from our meeting? And it's such a cool question because um, back in the day, and hey, I'm, I'm as guilty as, of this as anyone, I'd blast off all of my information. You know, when you're new and you're nervous, mm -hmm. blank space is deafening, right? And, it, and a, a two <laughs> second lull sounds like about 20 seconds. And the newbie rookie's always trying to fill it up with blah, blah, blah. You're gonna be on Facebook, you're gonna be on the net. Oh, you should see we're doing this, you're doing that. Hey, can I bring a buyer through, blah, blah, blah. But if you're gonna close, and if you're gonna ask for the order at the end, you've got to do, you, you must have delivered to their agenda. And this is a simple fact. So mm -hmm. what would you like to achieve from our meeting, Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel? Well, Mr. McDaniel says, um, we wanna know, know your fee for service or your commission. So I'll write that down. All right, to the questions, commission, question mark. Um, we've got some, uh, you know, what do you think our house is worth? Yeah, I'm gonna take a look around in a second, check that out. Uh, I write that down, opinion of value. Um, what else? Well, you know, we've got some cracked tiles in the bathroom. My wife thinks they should be fixed. I'm not so sure, we'd love your opinion on that. Cool, tiles in bathroom. Um, and if I don't know at that point, I'm adding to the agenda here, I'm saying, hey, terrific home, why are you selling? You've gotta know why they're yeah. selling, right? Mm -hmm. So. I go through the format, I talk about my fee for service. Now, here's another cool, uh, I won't call it a trick, because trick sounds like, I'm not trick, here's another very cool strategy. In my pre-listing kit, I've sent them one A4 page with seven or eight sales on them. So I've got a vague idea of what their property is worth before I get there, right? So I've sent them this list of recent sales. I don't put the agent, I just put the address and the price. So if, the, if I'm going to look at a property that's, I don't know, worth 800, I'll have a few sales in the 900s to a million and I'll have a few sales in the sixes to sevens or whatever underneath it. So before I've even looked around the house, I'm fishing for their opinion on price. And I'd say, Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel, what did you think of that list of comparable sales I dropped off? Did you get to see any of those properties, right? I'm, right. I'm not a fan of, hey, what do you think your house is worth? Because they're gonna say, well, you idiot, that's why you're here. Right. So, <laughs> so with the market, you're starting with yeah. the market and making them talk about the. You're, you're essentially forcing yeah. them to kind of face reality first before you get into the pricing yeah. conversation. Oh, we saw that place at 15 uh, uh, Johnson Street. You know, I wouldn't put my dog in there. So, okay, well, I didn't like that one. That was for sale at 800. They're thinking north of 800. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to uh, to be a little bit careful here. My job at the yeah. listing presentation is to get the bloody listing every time I'm there. Right. I'm serious about this. This is a $40,000 gig, like I said. My competitor, mm -hmm. if they were drowning, I'd stick the garden hose down their neck. That's how serious I am about this. This is business, <laughs> right? This is I'm business. So, I'm so glad you live in, the other, in another country than the other side of the country. <laughs> oh my God. Treat, I, I, just, I want agents to treat themselves with a little bit of respect. You know, we work hard. We don't finish at five o'clock on Friday. Saturday's game day. A lot of our buddies, they're spending their weekends with the family and stuff. We're working, right? Why would I waste my time not being serious about this? I'm not gonna stick the hose down anybody's neck. I'm, I'm being stupid, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying the seriousness of it is, is super important. Yeah. So I've delivered my presentation and I've gone through the points, right? I've done the circuit, we've talked price, we've talked, I like the, I like the term fee for service, not, not commission by the way. Commission, mm -hmm. the public, Joe Public think commission implies that we get a fee for basically we didn't do anything because everybody knows the house sells itself anyway, don't they? That sort of thing, mm -hmm. right? So I call it a fee for service. I'm providing a service. If I'm successful, again, so different to other professionals, if I'm successful, mm -hmm. I get to charge a fee. It's a success fee, right? So we cover off on all of that. And at the end of the day, I said, hey, I think Mr. and Mrs. McDaniel, I think we've covered everything here. How do you feel about letting me handle it for you? Well, Ray, we'd like to think about it. Top idea, I tell you what, I'm gonna make a few calls. I'm gonna head out to the car. Would 15 minutes be okay? Let them have a chat in private. Why not? I love that. Why not? Our good, our good friend Aaron Wynn does that too. He's like, yeah, yeah uh, like, I tell you what, I, you know, my wife texted me while we were talking. Let me just go out and return that call 
and I'll give you a second. He just walks out the door <laughs> and hops on the phone, I, calls his wife or waste time on the phone, gives him like five minutes. It's great. I love it. Why not? Why yeah. not? And sometimes sometimes I'll smile and go, oh, we need to sleep about it. So yeah. if, if they're not selling right then and there, so you've done the big presentation and it might be six months or I say, look, Ray, we just haven't decided yet. We're not sure. There's some things, you know, like Greg, he, he might get this job in Anaheim and he might be moving or he might not. We just don't know. I say, okay, that's cool. Let me ask you a question. And I'm still there, right? Mm -hmm. When the time comes, are you happy for me to handle it for you? It's a great question. Okay. So they're going to say either sure or we're not so sure. If they say sure, let's go with the sure scenario. Sure. Look them in the eye, shake the hand, shake the bows and say, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to getting a top result for you. Back to the office, handwritten note. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Daniel McDaniel, great to connect today. I'm looking forward to being your agent when the time comes. Warm regards, Ray. What's wrong with that? They've already given me the green light. Now, if they say, you know what, I'm not so sure, you know you've got some work to do. So, okay, I understand. And so they're, they're a maybe, you know, what's the issue? Um, mm -hmm. And at that point, I'll often say something like, um, and this is a great question because it relates to their often their two, two big concerns. I'll say, look, okay, I understand if, um, if you're still thinking, but I'm just thinking about my presentation and our discussion. Let me ask you, is it price? Now, price is a good question because price could be my commission, fee for service, or it could be my opinion of value on their property price, right? So it's mm. a split question. So you're covering off Interesting. two things really, really well. If you get, I'm there to get the listing, remember? I, I, want, I want the green light. Yes, if they ask me to come back with reports and blah, 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 that's fine. But I want to get, I want to get the green light on, on, uh, on my first visit. Do you get it every time? No, of course not. But you've got to try while you're there. Uh, my, the main reason why I think you've got to try while, while you're there is, is if it's been a great experience for everybody, if it's been awesome, and there's the warm and fuzzies, and every, everybody's got along famously, and you know, it just feels right, mm -hmm. as, as it should. If you don't ask the question there, the magic leaves with you, right? It's almost like they've walked out the gate and you can see the pixie dust almost evaporating behind you. And an hour later, it's gone. A day later, what was his name again? Ask there and then, right? Ask right. there and then. Don't ever be afraid to, to ask for the order. Let me just talk about the whole commission thing or fee for service thing because, I mean, everywhere, eventually people are challenged on that and everybody wants a deal, right? So here's, here's a great way I've discovered that, that, you can, that you can basically negate that every time. The person wants a deal, they want a deal. You want the listing, right? So-and-so has offered me X percent. So... Um, one thing to say, and you guys probably use this as, as well, but one thing to say is, okay, so you're happy to go with me, it's just about fee. Is that right? If we can work that out? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing to say, and, and, and I know a lot, of, a lot of people use that. If you're still stuck and getting nowhere, here's a great thing to say. You know what? I'd love to work for you. I'd love to show you the result that I can get. I'd like to be your agent. I understand you're looking for the best deal. I get that. I'd be doing the same thing. But here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to write a clause on the agreement that gives you the opportunity at any time prior to signing the contract of sale for the property, that gives you the opportunity to renegoti renegotiate um, our fee. Do you think that's fair? Yeah. Now, if they say no to that, it means they're not being fair. So being, asking the fair question mm. is very, very strong. Does that sound fair to you, Greg? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. If you say, no, that doesn't, that means like, you know, I'm not being fair. I'm not playing right. So but that's you wouldn't, you wouldn't get it. People wouldn't say no to that because that gives them, a, you know, in their mind, it gives them all the power. Yep. But they don't want to yep. be an asshole down the road if you really did bring the value and made it rain and sold their house for more than value or, or more than list or even at list or something like that in a short amount of time. I mean, there's some yep. dipshits out there that are going to be like, well, I don't know why you need all that money. You didn't really have to work that hard. You still did it in one weekend. You're like, mm -hmm. that's the point. Yep. <laughs> you, you don't have yep. to have people coming through your house anymore. You can let the kids run around naked with, with you know, body paint on and, you know, yep. leave the dishes in the, in, 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 in the sink. It's, it's good. Life is back to being yep. normal. Yep. Um,
But I, I love how putting, pushing it back onto them yeah. Yeah. Is, is a power move on your side. Have you ever – this is something that I, that I do when it comes to, you know, my fee for, my fee for service, which I'm going to use from now on. I don't take commissions. I, get pay, I have a fee for my services on Correct. completion. Um, and Correct. I say, look, they ask me, well, how much is your commission? And I say, the good news is, is I'm only 2.5%. Now, you and I need to get together and figure out what we want to pay the, the buyer's agent. How much yep. do we want to pay them? And then, because yep. they, they think 2.5% consistently, um, and our work could say, well, you know, my fee for service is only 2.5%. Yep, yep. So I love that. I love it. Small verbiage tweaks yep. make a huge yep. impact. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and if you're new, guys, if you're new, practice it. Workshop it. I mean, some of the toughest audiences you'll ever have are your work colleagues. You know, role play <laughs> it. Don't be... Don't be scaredy cats of doing it. Like get out there and, and have a go and, and do it because if you can perfect that, that forty thousand dollar gig, if you can if you can perfect that, um, seriously, I mean, what other industry can you make obscene amounts of money very, very quickly? Yeah. Right? Yes, there, yes we earn it. But so mm -hmm. so if you guys want to do live fire practicing on this and you can be prospecting at the exact same time, yes, cut your teeth with your fellow real estate agents because they will beat you right. up. But I also want you guys to go Please back out. Please feel to give your cell phone number up. Hey, I'm for, talking for, li for, for live fire practice. Oh, God. So this is what I'm going to say. <laughs> Seriously, go out on Facebook and put a thing out there and say, hey, look, I'll pay you guys 25 bucks. I'll give you a gift certificate. I'll do something form of payment if you allow me to practice my listing presentation on you. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that people will hit you up. And then and it might be friends or anything else, but it's, it's, it's real time. You go out there and you do a late listing presentation. Then you ask for the feedback. What could I have done better? What did I do great? Take your notes, improve, give them their gift certificate. Guess what? You've built rapport with the human beings on the other side of that table. You've gotten you know, positive feedback where, where you can change. And you've been able to pay it forward. So the law of reciprocity is already in full motion. You've given to them. Now they have a good feeling about you for Correct. potential referrals. Yeah, totally, hundred percent, hundred percent. Would you guys like to? Would you? Um, I'm more than happy to share my full listing presentation PDF if you wish. Wow. Um, just would. Would you like me to share the link? Would you like me to share it here with you, or yes. maybe if I send it to you, you can put it on. If I send it here to chat, uh, yeah. Greg, maybe you can maybe you can copy and paste that to our Facebook page. I'm getting yeah, you can just drop it. Here. You can drop it into the chat right there, and then uh, Matt and I can put it in our okay. Tuesday email, so people can have it on our Tuesday email. I've just so. dropped it in there for you. Just nice. dropped it into the chat right now. You guys just got Very a good. listing Come presentation up. that works. And I'm going to yeah, give no you kidding. my my direct mail power document as well, like my best direct mail letters. So just awesome. feel like Very cool. Well, it's called gifting so, and marketing. Ray, That's what I do. I'm curious, Ray, because one of the one of the things that uh, that Greg and I have talked about a lot in terms of like training people on how to do listing presentations or co consultations, I, I would say we prefer to call them, is that Greg has such a questions based listing consultation that uh, I mean, Greg, you and I were talking about this. You actually find it a little bit harder to train, especially someone that's new, because it's so, like yours is so free flowing. I'm curious, Ray, if your presentation or your meetings with, with potential sellers have gotten more that way over the years, are they way yeah. more questions based or do you still follow a relatively a similar format? No, def definitely, Matt. Um, I, I love the whole idea of asking questions. In fact, we've, we've created a, a, a document in, inside of Jiggler as well, where people can, where people can, uh, Send send this questionnaire as part of their as part of their pre-listing kit, and I'm happy to happy to share that PDF as well. So um, uh, I I think that if you're asking the right questions, like what would you like to achieve from our meeting today, um, you know, like what what properties on that list have you seen? Do you think your property might be similar to that kind of thing? Um, that that really cuts. So I want to I want to give you one more one lovely little trial close. That's my favourite trial close. Uh, of all time, um, because it, it makes a big difference, I think. And the trial close is that, because uh, I just want to mention, I know it's not right on topic, but be, before you forget, you're at the listing and you want some kind of indication as to how you're going, right? You want to get like a little bit of a heads up. Here's a great question to ask. If there is any, uh, like uh, our fictitious Mr. McDaniel um, during our presentation recently just told me that he's got some cracked tiles in the bathroom, right? 
So mm. when I hear that, my little ears peak up and I go, really, I, I want to see that. So I'll look at the bathroom and I'll say, you know what? I think you'd be surprised at how awesome this would look because a buyer's going to look at this. It's a wet area. It's expensive. Um, you know, it's a wet area of the house. It's expensive to repair. I've got a suggestion. What about I get my friend Mario, who's a, who's a very good tiler, to come by and just give us an estimate. No, no, no commitment, but just give us an estimate to find out what sort of cost is involved. Now, if Mr. McDaniel says yes to that, he's probably going to say yes to you being the agent. If he mm. says no to that, you still got some work to do. Yeah, here's another great trial. thing, and I like if here's another great trial close, and and you probably want to use this one if you if you really if you feel you got nothing to lose. I'd say look, one of the most important things when we're marketing your property is going to be our images. Big chance that buyer's going to see it online, so the images are super important. I work with a professional photographer, and she is amazing. But here's what I'd like to do: if you're okay with it. I'd like to come by tomorrow and I'd like to have her shoot some of the examples. I'd like to show you how I'd, how amazing your home's going to look when we, if, if we were your agent to start marketing it. And I'd love you to see, I'd love you to see those shots because I think you'll be impressed. But here's what I'd like to do. Even if you don't appoint us as your agent, I'd like you to have those photos, those images with, with my compliments. And, and I'd like to wish you every success with your sale. Now, if they say no to that, they're not going to hire you anyway. Mm. If they say yes to that, then you, you you're probably pretty much in. So I love um, that. They're good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's that's the photo close. So uh, lovely mm. little trial close, just to let, just to know how you're going, because everything should be planned that you're there to get the listing. That's what you're there for. Okay. If you're providing an opinion of value and they're nowhere near selling and they just want it for insurance purposes or whatever. And you're just and you're making friends. That's cool. It's a different thing. But if they're to, if they're there to get on the market and get sold, they haven't called Comfrey or or one of these property guys or one of these commission. What are they called? Those guys. Seventy percent of of whose whose listings anyway end up with with agents, if not more. But um, they've called you. They're looking for a real estate solution, right? Mm -hmm. So so they're looking to be sold to. You know, I love. Like shopping for a car, I love a good car guy because I don't want to. Yeah. I, I want the information. I, I don't want somebody in my face, but I want somebody who's who knows the product, can answer the question, and can pitch me a good deal. I want to be sold to. Mm -hmm. Like that's 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 how I operate, and I think a lot of a lot of people are the same. I've thought a lot about what a property seller wants, and I think there's three things. I, I bring it down to three things every time, and I've kind of written the book around around those three things. I reckon they want a top market price, obviously. I think they want a sale in a reasonable amount of time. Nobody wants to be on the market for months and months and months. And they, and I think thirdly, they want a great real estate experience. They want to be able to walk away from it saying, you know, Matt was a pro. He just helped us every every step of the way. Uh, that that was good. So, I think if your pitch and your testimonials from your clients and everything can be kind of loosely directed toward those those three things. Um, I, I think it really increases your chances. I think the best testimonials say, um, talk about price and and, uh, and you know competing buyers. Hi Ray, thanks so much for for helping us sell our property. What a fantastic result, well beyond our wildest dreams. How you were able to manage those five buyers in the bidding war is totally beyond us. But you're the pro, and we love your work. Uh, mm. Wouldn't go anywhere else. Uh, love uh, Peter and Margaret. Whatever. They're the testimonials that really rock. People love that. And they cater to exactly talk about the price because if you're not the agent that can get the top dollar for them, why would they hire you? Mm -hmm. There's no recommended retail on real estate. So if you can get if you can get the same amount of money as the next guy, why would they hire you? Mm -hmm. I reckon it all comes back to price. Yeah. So so you, you're not gonna you're not gonna lie to get the listing, but hey, if the eight hundred if the eight hundred thousand dollar home, if the seller wants to put that on the market at nine twenty, and but they're motivated to sell, I'll take it every time, because interesting. Two weeks later or a week later, I'll be back there going. The other owners in the area love you. Do you know why? Because every time they see they come into the area, they see your asking price and they go and buy another property because you're making all the other properties look cheap. <laughs> anyway, that's just about that's, good, that's just that's about managing down the line. <laughs> That yeah. is a ballsy line, but that's a good line. Yeah. I like it.
All right, it's let's, funny uh, you say, you know what? I can't believe it. The other sellers around here, they all love you. They're talking about you. They love you. <laughs> you you're their marketing machine. And you yeah, can say, funny. I got a question. There's been 3,600 visits on Zillow and, and there's only been four people through the house. That's a massive disconnect. Does that, that sound right to you? Where, what are we missing here? It's price. Yeah. So, I like it. Yeah, um, and, it's, one of the, and it's good because we have those tools now. We didn't yep, used to. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you can measure that. Yeah. You can measure that. If you're going in for a price reduction, don't do it without checking your numbers and yeah, saying, hey, this is, a classic, this is a classic disconnect. And the other one is days on market. If your days on market in the area average is 50 or whatever, um, and and you're at 65, mm -hmm. it's you've passed the use by date. What are you doing? Like yeah. you're living where you have to live, not where you want to live. Let's 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 move on here and get a result. Because I just, I, mm -hmm. I just love some of this. I just hate it. I just hate up. losing the listing. That's all. I, I hate losing the listing. <laughs> you're past the use by date. Right. <laughs> you're living yeah. where you have to live, not where you want to live. Those yeah. are yep. gems. <laughs> yep. Thank you. It makes me. It I makes wish me I could tell you they were mine. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take credit for them. We'll, we'll give you all the credit. Yeah, we'll give um, you yeah. Gene, so I want to bring you in because you've been very quiet. Uh, which is quiet. Unusual, but very yeah. respectful. We appreciate it. Uh, I know that you were kind of letting, uh, you know, let, letting Ray take center stage. But Gene, I want to put the, the spotlight on you because you always have a very valuable social media or tech tip to bring us. And we've got a few minutes of the show left. So what have you had for us? Uh, well, so wait, I, I got to say, I'm, I'm quiet for a reason. There's I, sometimes I come on the show and outside of listening to you two not talk, <laughs> I was going to say something, <laughs> something not so kind, but I let it slide. Uh -huh. You learn something every once in a while. So I was actually just picking up what, what Ray was throwing down, and I was trying uh, mentally applying it to my business and all the things I do in my life and yeah. just talking to people about certain things. So I, I just – I got to figure out how to get that accent. I got to imagine he, he ah, yeah. lists a, hot, a lot of I think that really is the secret. Alone. Yeah, if there's any takeaway from this, it's skip all the other stuff Ray said and just imitate the accent and you will have no problems in your listening No problem. I, people that know me would look at me a little crooked. But um, yeah. something, <laughs> something to add, uh, this jiggler uh, this jiggler looks great. And I'm, I, I know a couple people already signed up for their free account as we we're talking. I see them. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching the comments, and people are jumping on. I will be jumping on as well. Um, Love but one feedback, of the things Jake. I was going to talk about, and I'm going to figure out how to roll this into that jiggler, is, you know, Google now has a tour creator, a virtual tour creator, where you can build 360-degree tours from your computer. Wow. Really? Have you guys seen this? Oh, no. Didn't know that. No. It's brand new. It's uh, it's at VR dot google dot com and it looks like it's fairly simple i'm still digging in i gotta figure it all out but it looks like wow. it's pretty simple to use i know members of my team that do the social media stuff are using it right now for for some of our clients it looks pretty slick i don't personally know how to navigate through it but judging by you don't even have to log in because you have you're already logged into your google account from from gmail and then you just yeah. go through and start uploading pictures and stuff so it looks pretty cool vr dot google dot com check it out is it so? I'm doing nice. vr.google.com and I'm getting like Kelly Blue Book. Kelly something Blue. incorrect. VR like virtual. Yeah, it could be my dyslexia is strong today. We do not know. <laughs> so all right, so on, you, okay, yeah. hold on. So you might need another <laughs> qualifier. Do a forward slash tour creator at the end of it. Okay. So vr.google.com forward slash tour creator. Google. A virtual tour, oh, build immersive 360-degree tours right from your computer. Very cool. Use your own 360 photos or find one on Google Street View. Image overlays uh, seem interesting. And it does really cool. there. Yeah, this looks great. Very, very cool. All right. Ooh. Well, there you go. Hey, can, so, we, can we find out where everybody's calling in from, where everybody's visiting from on our list? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, to an extent, we've got some folks that have volunteered where they are at. Yeah. 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 They, I'm just interested to know where, where where people are coming from. Anyway, sorry. Yes, yeah, so we've got uh, Detroit, Boston. Texas. Uh, Texas, yep, Texas. Teresa, uh, Texas? Yeah. Hawaii, Hawaii. Square, Dave Johnson. Texas, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, all over the country, all over the states. Denise, Denise is from joking. Oh, no, she was joking. Sorry. 
<laughs> yes and guys make sure to put uh put in the comments where you guys are at uh leslie says san diego what's up leslie uh leslie. Aurelia is in florida and uh david's in westchester pa uh right in your neck of the woods gene annapolis maryland Boston. yeah so rockport maryland or uh yeah, mass. Excuse me. mass good lord we got people from all philly over. So make, saskatoon make sure what a good yes. town rockport matthews from annapolis westchester pennsylvania Gorgeous. Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. You guys like Indian food? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Do you? Oh, yes. I just, I got to tell you, this is just apropos of nothing, but just while we're chatting, I just got this amazing recipe for naan bread. Really? Yeah. Matt is that, an avid that, chef, so he, he will whip oh, up really? the bats for the next show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, I, I would send you, dude, I would send you the recipe, but I can't because the guy that gave it to me made me sign a naan disclosure agreement. Oh, what that's how you know it's a real recipe. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, I downloaded your listing presentation. It was on the back end of that. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> back end of that. I go, Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> and now every seller gets uh, that secret non-recipe. Oh, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Right. That's All right. So, right. Uh, so, Ray, what's the best way for people to reach out and connect with you? Ray at Jiggler.com or just uh, at Ray Wood Live on, uh, on, um, on the tweets. And Jiggler is like juggler with an I, correct? Yeah, but with an uh, with an A R, so it's J I G G L A R. I can okay, put it. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Yes, put that in the comment. That would be fantastic. Put it in um, so guys, everybody, try that out, uh, and then we will get you guys the uh, the link for the list present, all that good stuff. Uh, and then Gene, how do people reach out and connect with you to get more exposure for their business? Just do a Google search on my name, Gene Volpe, or go to GeneVolpe.com. All right. I no, no, no evil. jingle today, but all right. Yeah, I still I like evil, like evil can evil. <laughs> <sighs> well, Matt, actually, I, we need to go by our our, our, our superhero names. So, Bird Boy. Should I, should I tell them how? <laughs> what was I'm that? Catman, and you are Bird Boy, remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> who, who dubbed us that? Was that? It was something we were talking about. I can't remember who it was. It was the three of us. Oh, they were talking about Missy. the cartoon strip. The three of us? That was Missy. Right. Yeah, we were talking to Nomaha last week, and, we, and she's like, you're the cat, man, and what are you going to be? You're going to be Bird Boy. <laughs> cat man and Bird Boy. <laughs> with, with, with the Vulpinator as our evil ninja you know, uh, an, you know, antithesis. He's a, of, of he's a special evil. guest on our morning radio show with Cat Man and Bird, cat, cat man and bird Boy in the morning. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, <laughs> Greg, how do, you, uh, how do people connect with you and learn more about joining up with our EXP team if they should be so daring? Oh, God, good thing we don't take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> uh, guys go to bookmcdaniel.com it's right there if you're watching my name right now bookmcdaniel.com if you're interested in talking about exp i want you guys to go there book some time book 30 minutes see if you know exp is the right fit for you um because we have a kim kardashian ass of value on the back end just plump and full of goodness and so i want you guys to go there learn about all i got the head nod i didn't get the the, the, the nose pinch yet damn it uh from the johnson face <laughs> Uh, but we're going to have uh, masterminds. We're going to have products. We're going to have coaching. You can reach out to Matt and talk to him about systems and products and you know how to guide through all this jungle of, of, of opportunity out there, what's going to fit you best. Uh, you can coach with me uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. on four days a week. Um, there's just so much that I can't go all over it all right now. But just come on over. Go to bookmcdaniel.com, and we'll party on, Wayne. <laughs> party on, Darth. <laughs> Love it. All right, guys. So we put a, a nice bow on this particular episode, Greg. What color should we go with today, Matt? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's put a red bow on today for, for no bow. other reason than I feel like it. Okay. It's a red bow day. All right, guys. You know, we've been doing the show for a little over three and a half years at this point. We love doing this. And the reason why we do it is because we get to introduce you to amazing human beings like Ray Wood. Um, you guys, he talked for almost 40 minutes straight and like nuggets of wisdom were dropping out of his mouth the entire time. So go back, go watch us a couple more times. And I want you guys to take a pen to paper and I want you to write them down because the information you have here is invaluable. Small, subtle verbiage changes are going to make a radical difference in your business. So Ray, thank you. Evil bald ninjas. Thank you. Uh, Johnson, I don't care, but mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> until next time guys, peace out ninjas. We Thanks, go. Greg.